California culture as well? Yeah, I think um, I think Atlanta, any just the South period has a yeah. has a great connection with LA because it's like, like I say, a lot of the people who live in LA, their parents and their grandparents moved from the South mm. to to LA, and, mm. and you can you can like still hear feel those influences in a lot of ways, right? Uh, and so typically, like if you go to LA. Um, you know, there's there's still like you can still get soul food place, mm-hmm. go to soul food restaurants. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of places in LA that has southern traditions yeah. that still carry on to this day. Yeah. And so it is not a it's not by mistake that you would you would have someone like a Kendrick Lamar who's who's influenced by Atlanta. Like like we said before, he has a whole verse about Atlanta on Not Like yes. Us, yes. which is the biggest song, mm. b- biggest rap song right now uh, globally. <laughs> It's the song of the year. It's man. the song Already of the year. Yeah. And he has a whole verse about Atlanta yeah. and what Atlanta represents to hip hop. Hmm. And and he does it in a way where he's dissing Drake and and and, and, and using it to say that Drake is is stealing from the culture. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it, it shows you how powerful Atlanta is. Mm. Where, you know, he's rapping this whole verse mm. about Atlanta mm. and Everybody's like he's in, in a sense is like giving a nod to Atlanta as well mm-hmm. uh, of Atlanta being so prolific when it comes to music, uh, particularly hip hop. Yeah, that that Kendrick is like, look, these are these are the these. This is what's happening in Atlanta, and yeah. you're basically using Atlanta mm. in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know, next time Drake tries to come and, and, and I guess <laughs> connect to Atlanta in a, in, it's in, in a way, it's not gonna hit the same because it's, <laughs> it's in the back of people's mind. It's, it's like, oh, okay, now you, you know. You, 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 he he's planting these Kendrick seeds. Kendrick Ward about you. Yeah, he's he's planting these little seeds. Facts. Um, and, I, and just talk about that. I, I want to kind of pivot. I yeah. know. We, I know. We, <laughs> little kids love this song. Yeah, bro. <laughs> We've been talking about it. It's crazy. Little kids love <laughs> not like us. And I'm like, all right. Now the language is kind of just yeah. like off putting. I understand. Yeah. Like you know, you got like eight year olds cursing and stuff. <laughs> but there's like viral videos of kids singing not like us. But yeah. I think there is an important moment because it's warning kids about stranger danger. You wow. Know? And, 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 and it's wow. like, it's you a know, popular stranger danger song. Yeah. Like it's a popular stranger, stranger danger where kids are being educated it's from a, from a young standpoint, like from a young age. Wow. It's wrong for a grown person to look at you this way. Are hey, you cooking right now? Man. You know, like it's That's, wrong for a, for a grown wow. person to see yeah. you in a certain way. Yeah. And now, you know, you got kids singing A minor. Wow. So now they know that, all right, this ain't right. Y'all, we are back for another edition of the Three Millie Podcast. I'm supposed to be your host, Caleb Smith. Today, back by popular and cultural demand, fresh off the plane from LA, man. Fresh from the pop out, AR Shaw. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. Um, yeah, man. It's it's uh, it was an amazing week, Juneteenth. Yeah. Uh, 2024. And uh, the pop out, Ken and Friends, yeah, Inglewood, California, just got back from LA. So, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot to talk about. Yes, sir, indeed it is, man. Mm-hmm. Being there overall, first of all, you were right, AR. I got to keep yeah. telling you that you told us what was going to happen, yeah. and everything that you detailed about Kendrick being so calculated, he bodied it again. What was that vibe like being at the historic LA Forum, home of Magic Johnson and the Showtime Lakers? What was that like, man? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, for people who don't know, the forum is definitely a historic historical site in LA, yeah. Inglewood, California, which is a historical black neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Now it's being gentrified. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the LA natives, yeah. you know, see it in another way. Yeah. So, so the, the, uh, the pop out Ken and friend, uh, Kendra Lamar, uh, concert in Inglewood, mm-hmm. California took place in the forum. And, uh, for those who don't know, Inglewood, California is a historical black neighborhood, historically black community in, California, uh, that's being gentrified right now. Mm-hmm. And so there was a lot of, uh, you know, just walking into that building, you know, you see a lot of like different cultures, of course, uh, with LA, you know, there was some people in the red, there were some people in blue, yeah. uh, you know, you had, had Latinos, mm-hmm. you know, black. So it's, it's, it's like a mixture of people in this one place 
uh, going to see this uh, this this uh, show and not really knowing what to expect. I mm. think I think everybody was anticipating the moment. Yeah. But uh, me being an Atlanta native, being out there in L.A. And, uh, you know, what's interesting, you have Nipsey behind me. Yeah. And I covered Nipsey. What, what was so interesting is that I was in L.A. when Nipsey passed. Mm. I was covering the NAACP Awards, and I had actually left the award show, and I was about to get on a plane. And I caught a text, and my friend said that they don't think Nipsey was going to make it. Wow. I literally left the airport, I left LAX, yeah. got a rental car, and drove down to Crenshaw. <sighs> And covered, uh, you know, just, you know, you, you saw the people in the community yeah. just supporting Nipsey, things of that nature. And just, you know, you saw that 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 uh, that love and that unity, mm -hmm. uh, Bloods, Crips, yeah. people from different sets, different gangs coming together <clears throat> after Nipsey passed. Yeah. And so L.A. hadn't really seen that moment since then. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Kendra kind of kind of brought that same feeling back to L.A. Yeah. You know, so when, so me walking into the forum, I'm seeing that same that same type of feeling that I mm. saw when Nipsey passed mm. uh, and when Kobe passed. Yeah. That same feeling of everybody coming together uh, for one cause. For sure. And to your point, I put Nip behind you for that exact reason, okay. because knowing today's subject matter on this yeah. episode and seeing what what Kendrick did and seeing so many people. You got Hoover Crips and 60 Crips on the same stage. You got, to your point, people like YG, you got Bloods and Pyrus on the stage. Seeing that moment, I think, solidified Kendrick being our GOAT for our generation. Because I think that personified hip hop, not just on a music level, but on that cultural level. And I think on that same sentiment, Again, that's what separated Kendrick from Drake. And I think what, what made this whole pop out so dope, we weren't even talking about Drake. We were just enjoying the moment. Do you think it's safe to say, we already know Kendrick, he's the king of rap, but do you think it's basically safe to say that he's like LA's legend right now? Of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you know, LA has, they have a lot of legends. Yeah. Um, going back to NWA, mm -hmm. Ice-T, Ice Cube, yeah. Dr. Dre, Snoop, Tupac. Even though Tupac is, you know, he's, he 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 moved around. Yeah, he yeah. called L.A. home mm -hmm. before he passed, and so mm -hmm. he he claimed L.A. in a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, claimed California in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, being from, you know, he had a lot of his upbringing uh, came in the Bay Area as well. Yeah. Uh, but Kendrick, yeah, he's. I mean, he's that. You only get like a few figures, I think, in hip hop that's kind of like been able to kind of galvanize communities mm -hmm. like this yeah and, and and we saw tupac do it we saw biggie do it yeah. jay and Nas to a certain extent and now we're seeing kendrick do it right uh on a, on a larger scale but right. just going back to what you were saying about the bloods and the crips and mm -hmm. everybody being on stage at the ending of the show mm -hmm. what's interesting is that you know we it started out as this moment of okay this is this is a celebration of in a sense the ending of this this rap battle between Drake and Kendrick. For sure. And it probably never gets to this point if Drake never does what I, what I said. I, I tell, you know, we had a conversation. Mm -hmm. I was like, Drake should just not uh, react to Kendrick. He's, yeah. You know, he could do subtle disses. I think yeah. they've been doing subtle disses for years. They mm -hmm. could have, it could have been on that level. But once Drake stepped out there with that, did with a diss track, mm -hmm. multiple diss tracks, yeah. and then using social media as a way to kind of, uh, taunt Kendrick into mm. releasing the song. Mm. I don't think Drake really saw the foresight of where it could, where this the whole thing could lead. Right, and it just got progressively worse. Mm. And then we saw almost like a rap battle Super Bowl at the farm, where wow. we get yeah. you get an entire West Coast mm -hmm. culture pretty much celebrating yeah. uh, Kendrick's victory in this rap battle, mm -hmm. but in a way that's going to unify. Uh, these different sets and these different games within the city. Yeah. And you would hope that hopefully it'll be something that could be duplicated, not necessarily from a rap standpoint, but just from a community standpoint in other mm -hmm. cities because they're gang issues in er almost every major inner city in America. Wow. You know, what if the Chicago, you know, the, the gang issues in Chicago if, mm -hmm. could unify in the same way mm -hmm. in New York, even yeah. in Atlanta? Like, yeah. what if, you know, all the people who are beefing in these communities can come together and show unity in that way. And so to me, that was like the biggest moment out of everything is that mm -hmm. all these people who come from different places who are basically fighting for the same resources, because yeah. I think when it comes to the, to gang violence, yeah. it's like 
people who are in these uh, impoverished communities mm -hmm. fighting for a lack of resources that they don't they don't have. And so they kind of fight each other because it's not really much resources <laughs> to, to survive. To so, yeah. you know, you have these this ongoing battle between these these groups and then to see everybody put it put it aside and, and, and come together on stage on Juneteenth. Mm. I think it was a it was a magical moment and also it was probably one of the greatest moments in hip hop history. For sure, man. And correct me if I'm wrong, AR. Was it when Kendrick when he did that like special effect of morphing into OJ Nip, was that the heart part four? Heart part five. It was the part part five. Heart, the heart yeah, the heart part five because gotcha. uh, yeah, yeah, because Drake yeah. tried to do Drake did six. Yep. <laughs> That's right. And seeing that, right, of Kendrick personified as Nip which I thought was like a beautiful moment. Of course, we already know about dedication yeah. on Victory Lap, iconic song. How do you think Kendrick is carrying on Nip's legacy right now? Because all I could think about on that stage was Nip, because I'm like, imagine if Nip was on that stage with Kendrick right now. Yeah, so, so you know, you talk about Nipsey and uh, Mustard did a, ded did a whole dedication to Nipsey, mm -hmm. where it was like, you know, he had everybody turn, you know, put their cell phone lights yeah. up and he played several tracks from Nipsey Hustle. And everybody, you know, in the, in, the, in the arena just wrapped along to Nipsey. Mm. But Nipsey's whole ideology was let's bring all the gangs together yeah. for one goal. Yeah. You know, and his whole thing was about entrepreneurship. Right. Uh, pushing, you know, get rid of all the fighting. Let's let's yeah. get let's come together, mm -hmm. build from a business standpoint and then, you know, put our minds together and for, for something that's progressive yeah. instead of just, you know, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. on the street for mm -hmm. violence that doesn't really end in anything but death mm -hmm. and, and, and bloodshed. So Nipsey's message was always something that um, that you would hope could be duplicated in other communities. And I think, you know, from a, I think Kendrick was able to kind of bring Nipsey's uh, dream or ideology to life mm -hmm. because I don't think we ever saw that with Nipsey while That's he was heavy. while he was alive. That's heavy. What yeah. he was, you know, what he was preaching was like, yo, let's just let's put all this gang stuff aside and let's kind of focus on one goal of wow. of, of lifting up the community and making the community better. Yeah, because that was his thing. You know, he had businesses in, in Crenshaw. Yep. He was opening up a a, a, a workspace mm -hmm. where where kids could learn about technology. That was a uh, Vector ninety. Vector correct? ninety. Yep. Gotcha. Vector ninety. So gotcha. yeah, actually, uh, we did a when I was a Rolling Out magazine, we did a cover cover shoot with Nipsey mm. Hustle at Vector 90. Wow. And wow. Uh, this was like, you know, maybe a few months before he passed. Wow. And he kind of walked us through the whole building. Mm. And we talked about just like uh, all, the, all the things that, that he envisioned of, you know, young kids being able to like learn different skills mm. at this place called Vector 90. So mm. we, you know, we saw what, what Nipsey's vision was in, mm. term, in terms of bringing everybody together. So hopefully this is something that can kind of restart that yeah. in, in a sense. Man. AR, talk to me, man, because you are that one journalist. You kind of like uh, my man. I forgot his name, but he's everywhere. He's like a hip hop connoisseur. I used to see him on the hip hop trivia. All the new face. Oh, yeah. That's you my are guy. <laughs> basically like new face when that's it comes to media and journalism. You are everywhere when it matters, right? Talk to me about meeting Nip, walking through Vector 90. What was Nip like as a, not as a rapper, not as yeah. a businessman, but just as a black man, as a human being, what was Nip like when you first encountered him? I mean, Nip was just, he was just cool, man. He was like, you could tell the guy was, he was from the street, but then he had like a mentality that was beyond street. Right. Right. Where it was just like, he was always talking about business, mm -hmm. you know, so always talking about, uh, you know, having this, bringing your resources together to kind of, to kind of, you know, make something happen out of nothing. Yeah. That was his biggest thing. He talked, he, you know, we, we, when we had the interview, he talked about, uh, you know, just how he started with him and his brother. They were just mm. like selling like t-shirts and yeah. socks. <laughs> they yep. were like selling t-shirts and socks <laughs> on the corner. But you, but but they started somewhere. Mm. You know, he started somewhere, and eventually he was able to open up a flagship store, the Marathon Store. Yeah. But he had to start somewhere, and I think yeah. that was his whole thing was just like really putting that, planting that seed in, into people. Mm. You look and you listen to his music. His music was very motivational. It was. It's still yeah. very, very motivational. Yeah. You can still listen to Nipsey. Yeah. And it's like, you Timeless know, too. It's timeless. To a certain extent. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's, a lot of Nipsey's uh, albums are like self-help books. It is. <laughs> where that's you can just like listen and excellent. like, oh wow, I'm, yeah. I need to motiv be motivation to do this, you know? So yeah. Nipsey in a lot of ways uh, personified what hip hop could be in terms of mm turning uh, 
nothing into something mm-hmm. and, and really just uh you know like we're saying he's from the streets he's from yeah. from from the 60s mm. uh crenshaw you mm. know so it's like he's from that community but mm. he was trying to elevate people in that community to think another way yes sir yeah kendrick again back to the pop out i think kendrick's x factor that works in his favor every time that makes us connect with him seamlessly is culture oh yeah because Kendrick, him being black American, us being from America, especially yeah. from the South too, of seeing yeah. something on Juneteenth and seeing Kendrick perform and having that social yeah. awareness to even have the pop out on Juneteenth. Yeah. Culturally, what did you feel from seeing this happen on Juneteenth? And also, um, what do you think makes Kendrick just so tapped in? Because I feel like just savvy wise, like that was so savvy to me. It was so smart. And mm-hmm. it was like a subtle separation between him and Drake where it showed I'm smarter. So the entire, you know, gist of 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 this battle was yeah. it was this was Kendrick pointing out that Drake is 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 not us, mm. and, 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 and and he said it in so many ways. Mm. Um, Kendrick Kendrick doesn't like what Drake represents, mm. and so Drake, being Canadian, mm. uh, growing up in a, in a community where. He didn't really face the hardships that that Kendrick faced. They, you know, he doesn't he doesn't represent, I guess, the the, the, the typical story of hip hop. Hmm. But most, you know, most artists yep. they come from a place, yeah, and they lean on that place, mm. and that place becomes a part of their identity. Drake never had that. Wow. In terms of, there is an identity in Toronto, but Drake never really leaned on it. Mm. He kind of came to America to kind of capture Black culture, Black American culture. In, 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 in different aspects of Black American culture, where this Houston, where this Atlanta, Houston, Atlanta, Vegas, right? Houston, Atlanta, Vegas, now. like, but that was his whole thing. Was yeah, just it was. like, it was. you know, how can he, you know, how can he mimic these cultures? Mm. And, and he did it in a beautiful way, in mm. a sense where all his stuff sound it sound really good, <laughs> like it sound really good. But yeah. it was it was cosplay. Mm. It, he, you know, he was an actor. He was a great actor, and he still is a good actor mm. uh, in terms of how he. You know, he could come to Atlanta, sit, you know, stand next to 21 Savage <laughs> and talk about gangster stuff that he never lived. Mm. And and people love it because it sounds good. Sonically, it's, you know, it's appealing. Like, yeah. But I think what happened with, you know, Kendrick's main gripe with, with Drake was that he was using black American culture in a way to, uh, I guess, make himself. It, it was it was to enrich himself and not really enrich the community. Right. Mm. So Kendrick did something that Drake couldn't do on Juneteenth. Yeah, you know, <laughs> which is which is you know, the blackest holiday that I think we've ever had. Yeah, national by holiday by far. Yeah, and he does a a, a show that's going to lean into California LA culture, mm. something that Drake can't do in Toronto. Yeah. Like I like Drake couldn't do a pop out in Toronto. It's not as appealing either. It's not as appealing. Yeah. You know, he you just can't do it. And mm. so, <laughs> it's, <not laughs> so you, it's just not gonna happen. And yeah. so Kendrick was doing something like he was he 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 mentally destroyed Drake on so many levels and and you know from a lyrical standpoint, yeah. but also from a social and cultural standpoint, because it's like, all right, I have a place that I call home and this is what my home looks like. Mm. This is this is what it this is what it means to grow up in LA. And I think Drake made the mistake of uh on one of the disc records saying that uh that 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 uh Kendrick doesn't really rep a set. And he was like, you know, that, 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 I think that's the line where he was like, Yeah, YG reps the set, you know. Yeah, 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 you're yeah. right. You're uh, right. Yep. <laughs> so that's crazy. Yeah, so he he, you know, he's calling out Kendrick saying that Kendrick isn't really gang affiliated, even though he's from LA, LA. Mm-hmm. And then he makes another uh, claim saying that he's bigger. Drake says that he's bigger in L.A. than Kendrick. That's so disrespectful. Bro. And so he's making yeah. all these mistakes. And so Kendrick can say, OK, he's taking these small lyrics and saying, OK, I'm going to I'm going to really turn it on you in a way that you can't. It's going to be in your face. Mm. So he brings up every prominent L.A. artist yep. from the young guys that's coming up yep. to Dr. Dre. Yeah. <laughs> yes. E-40 lying. doing the doing the Big introduction was on stage, too. Big boy so was talking on stage. about the media part. Uh, yeah, from from you know radio host Big Boy. Yeah, and so he 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 turned everything that uh, that uh, <laughs> that Drake put out there against him. Wow, it's like okay, you saying I'm not from the set? I'm gonna bring up every set in LA, mm. every blood set, every crip set, and I'm gonna put them on a stage together. 
something that you can't do. Mm. Like, you can't do this. Mm. And so I just think that in a lot of ways, Drake wasn't aware of this battle. He wasn't aware of Kendrick. Mm -hmm. Just from a social standpoint, he he was just out of touch from from the beginning. Like he was just he just doesn't doesn't have a a, a common sense of of awareness of of what was about to happen to him. Mm. And I think that was like his biggest mistake. It's almost like, you know, when you, when you when you're a kid and your parents are like, "Look, don't step in the ant bed." Yep. Or don't mess with the beehive. You ain't going to find out till And you're going you're not going to find out till you get stung. Mm. And he got stung in the worst way possible by from any rapper in history. Oof. There's been diss records since the since the 80s, since the 70s. Like mm. hip hop has always been about rap rap battles and yeah. things of that nature. Never in the history of hip hop has an artist been decimated mm. on a global platform like Drake was decimated on Juneteenth. It's never happened before in the history of hip hop. Perfect timing. Where an artist mm. like Kendrick Lamar raps your diss song, <laughs> Not Like Us. <laughs> Five times, and they played it six times because they played it another that's time a, when, they, when, was when he was leading. Them. So it was really <laughs> six times. They played it six times for in a row. Guy. For the six guy. For the six guy, right? And so it was a full circle moment. They, they played it, they played not like us six times in a row. Wow. And you having the entire crowd mm. saying that you a pedophile. Yeah. That you like young women. Yeah. Like, yeah, OVO, yeah. I mean, and, and, 69 and, it's, just, guy. and it's being streamed globally on Amazon. On, on Amazon. Mm. And so this is like I say, this has never happened. This was a Super Bowl of rap battles. It was like it never has happened in the history of hip hop that someone has been decimated on a platform of this magnitude. Sheesh. Hey, are you were preaching the Super Bowl of the rap beef of the rap moments? So when I think about rap icons, right? I would say, man, especially I I think about how most of them, and I would say posthumously as well, come from the West whether we think about Nip, Pop, right, Mac Dre, we think about people on the West Coast. Larry June right now, seeing yeah, his Andrew, impact, yeah. Kendrick's impact. Yeah. Of course, you already know in the South, we already got legends yeah. for days. You got the Master P's, you got the Jay Princes, we go with Outkast, like days on days, Uncle Luke, East Coast, you know, you talk about whole New York, of course. However, though, it's something about the West AR that makes the world resonate and listen. NWA mm -hmm. changed the game. Why do you think us as a rap culture in the world is so infatuated with the West Coast. Well, the West Coast, West Coast hip hop is different because for one, from a musical standpoint, a lot of West Coast music, they have a lot of Southern roots to it. So a lot uh, of people that's from, from they, they live in LA, they come yep. from the South in a, in a sense, where they come mm. from either Mississippi, yep. uh, Memphis, like they come from those mm -hmm. areas, you know, Louisiana, yep, Texas. Louisiana, yep. And so they kind of went west. So those black families went met, went west. And so you you hear a lot of that in in their music. And so from from early on, uh, West Coast hip hop has always had a very melodic sound to it, mm. a very easy going sound where it's like, you know, it, it, it had the, you can you can hear the South it's like laid back. Yeah, it's laid yeah. back, but you can hear the South in it, right? You mm -hmm. can hear you can hear that Southern influence in it. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, LA is Hollywood. Mm. And so you got you come from a culture that's used to blockbuster, right? Yeah. You talk about a place like LA that knows what how 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 to take something small and make it huge. Mm. Uh, and so that's just that comes with the nature of the territory where you this is Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> so you know we you know in, in Hollywood is is it's a place where it's like this this is the this is the place where the the big screen where the big where, the, mm. where these stories are told on the big screen. Mm -hmm. And so. You, you use that same thing with music. Mm. Now you have blockbuster musicians, blockbuster Facts. artists. Yeah. Uh, think about Interscope Records. Mm. Uh, you know, years ago, we got to think about like that era of Dr. Dre and Snoop. I remember Snoop first first week he came out. I think he sold like four million copies or something crazy. It was something crazy back then, like where you back had to then, physically the physical, the physical. Crazy. But it was just like wow. It was like it was something about. West Coast rap where mm. they were able to kind of make music theatrical mm. in a sense. You know, if you go back to even like straight out of Compton, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the chronic mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style, mm -hmm. those were like blockbuster albums mm -hmm. where it was like, you know, in the East Coast, 
they're making great music. Yeah. But at the same time, you didn't. It took a while for the East Coast to really make blockbuster albums. If you think about the first few artists that were blockbuster artists, mm-hmm. they were from the West Coast. You got Dre, you got yep. Snoop, you got MC Hammer. Mm. Like MC Hammer from the Bay Area. A lot of people don't talk about that. But no, he MC was Hammer was a blockbuster right. artist. Dang, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's that culture of we can do this on a large scale. We can take mm. something that's small, we can put it on a large scale. Yeah. And a lot, like I say, in hip hop, that happened on the West Coast first primarily. Mm-hmm. Where of course, you know, we not we we we're not shunning in yeah. New York because, you know, they had the uh you know, Ron DMC. Ron yeah. DMC was big. Mm-hmm. LL Cool J. Mm-hmm. Those guys were big. Mm-hmm. You know, from from that from that era. Yeah. But at the same time, it was like Ron DMC and LL Cool J in the eighties. Mm. They didn't sell like Snoop and Dr. Dre or MC Hammer. Wow. So you just got to think about that that how those two things contrast. Yeah. New, you know, East Coast rap and West Coast rap, mm-hmm. and what was different and how they how they uh, rolled out that product. Nah, for sure. And so, like I say, it's a very theatrical type thing with mm-hmm. the West Coast and how they uh, amplified their music and amplified uh, just how they were going about things uh, mm-hmm. from a from a from a record standpoint mm-hmm. that we didn't really see in New York. New York mm-hmm. was about, you know, just putting hip hop on the map, making yep. sure that people respect hip hop, because, yeah. of course, New York is the birthplace. But at the same time, uh, you know, when New York had it, when when New York reigned as the top uh, you know, city in hip hop. Yeah. Their whole thing was about getting that respect yeah. from just from the culture, mm. and then it's like, but they didn't really have those. They didn't have like like big artists. Yeah. Whereas when it comes out west, mm. then that's when you start to see those big artists uh, come out. Yeah. So it's just a contrast between those two cities. Listen, man, you're not lying because Master P, you know, he was Rest soaking up game. Yep. Uh, in the Bay Area as well, and I think too, man. With the West Coast, it's the lifestyle. Whether it's the weed, it's the women, like you said, it's the movies, the good weather. It's California. Yep. It's beautiful. How do you think that environment cultivated its new king of the Kendrick Lamar right now? Well, Kendrick Kendrick Lamar, he's he represents all of of West Coast. Mm. Like he's he's almost like a student of the game. Wow. Um, in a sense, kind of like Kobe. Like Kobe, mm. you know, he you, you you can tell that Kobe watched a lot of Mike. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Talk he, like him, walk he talk, like him. Yeah. Talk like him, walk yep. like him. He watched like a Mike, but yep. Mike watched a lot of Dr. J. That's what people don't give credit. Yeah, to. Yeah, so like That's so, a whole basketball so yeah, so yes. yeah. So Jordan watched a lot of Dr. J, and yes. so you see you see that lineage mm. and how it how it kind of evolved. Right. Same way with Kendrick. Kendrick mm. Kendrick was a student of the game, young. You know, watching watching Dre and Snoop, mm. watching Tupac. Mm. You know, so it was like Kendrick from a, from from early on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he tells this story about his father taking him to the California Love uh, video shoot when mm. Tupac uh, initially got out of prison. Wow! Uh, his father took him to uh, down to the to the California Love video shoot, wow. and Kendrick said he was just inspired by that moment. <laughs> and, and I think he embraces the the, the history of West Coast rap, mm-hmm. and also. When you think about it, like a lot of of Kendrick rap, a lot of his hip hop, it it leans on Atlanta too, yeah. <laughs> because you can hear some in the, in early Kendrick, you can hear some Outkast, <laughs> you can hear some Andre Three K, like mm. Big Boy, like you can hear some of his influences, mm-hmm. uh, even like even from you know Jazzmatazz, like he mm. has a lot of uh, cultural influences yeah. uh, that that goes beyond just hip hop, mm-hmm. and so I just think that that Kendrick is a student of the game and yeah. he takes everything that's around him and he's able to kind of, uh, you know, present it in a way that's like, okay, it, it captivates people. Yeah. Almost like a screenwriter. He's kind of mm. like um, John Singleton. Mm. He's like the John Singleton of hip hop. Wow. I love that, man, because that actually bleeds into my very next question, because I think we don't talk about it often enough about that connection between Atlanta California yeah. because man it's a big population of yeah. people from Cali who live in, uh, yeah. in Atlanta shout out to people like uh, Brandon Peters um, hip-hop trivia but we have a whole California picnic here yeah, in Atlanta right yeah, yeah. you know to to that same point about mm-hmm. the musical influence with the sound how Kendrick he's listening to Outkast mm-hmm. Shanti Doss I saw that she had posted how she had the Dungeon family like South Central LA back in the 90s, yeah, yeah, like tapping yeah. in with them. Yeah. Speak on that overall cultural connection between the South and especially Atlanta and LA. 
Californian culture as well? Yeah, I think um, I think Atlanta, and it's just the South period has a, yeah. has a great connection with LA because it's like, like I say, a lot of the people who live in LA, their parents and their grandparents moved from the South mm. to to LA, and, mm. and you can you can like still hear feel those influences in a lot of ways, right? Uh, and so typically, like if you go to LA, um, you know there's there's still like you can still get soul food places, mm-hmm. go to soul food restaurants. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of places in LA that has Southern traditions yeah. that still carry on to this day. Yeah, and so it is not a it's not by mistake that you would you would have someone like a Kendrick Lamar who's who was influenced by Atlanta. Like like we said before, he has a whole verse about Atlanta on Not Like yes. Us, yes. which is the biggest song, mm. b- biggest rap song right now uh, globally. It's the song of the year, It's man, the song of the year. Yeah. And he has a whole verse about Atlanta yeah. and what Atlanta represents to hip hop. Hmm. And and he does it in a way where he's dissing Drake and, 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 and using it to say that Drake is, is stealing from the culture. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it, it shows you how powerful Atlanta is, mm. where, you know, he's rapping this whole verse mm. about Atlanta mm. and everybody's like he's in, in a sense, it's like giving a nod to Atlanta as well mm-hmm. uh, of Atlanta being so prolific when it comes to music, uh, particularly hip hop. Yeah. That, that Kendrick is like, look, these are these are the, these, this is what's happening in Atlanta. And yeah. you're basically using Atlanta mm. in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um and so, you know, next time Drake tries to come in and, and I guess <laughs> connect to Atlanta in a, sub, in, in, in a way, it's not going to hit the same because it's, <laughs> it's in the back of people's minds. It's like, oh, OK, now, you, you know, he, he, he's planting these Kendrick seeds. Kendrick warned us about you. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's planting these little seeds. Facts. Um, and, I, and just talk about that. I, I want to kind of pivot. I yeah. know we... I know we <laughs> Little kids love this song. Yeah, bro. <laughs> We've been talking about it. Too. It's crazy. Little kids love <laughs> Not Like Us. And I'm like, all right. Now, the language is kind of just yeah. like off-putting. I understand, yeah. like, you know, you got like eight-year-olds cursing and stuff. <laughs> but there's like viral videos of kids singing Not Like Us. But yeah. I think there is an important moment because it's warning kids about stranger danger. Wow. You know? and, 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 and it's wow. like... It's you a know, popular Stranger Danger song. Yeah, like it's a popular Stranger, stranger Danger where kids are being educated it's from a, a from a young standpoint, like from a young age. Wow. It's wrong for a grown person to look at you this way. Are you cooking right now? Man. You know, like it's That's, wrong for a, for a grown wow. person to see yeah. you in a certain way. Yeah. And now, you know, you got kids singing A minor. Wow. So now they know that, all right, this ain't right. Whereas wow. previous, previous generations... A lot of that stuff was swept under the rug, in the, under the rug, you know what I'm saying? Whereas a lot of stuff that happened to young kids mm. and, with, and, and, and it's being, you know, it gets it gets swept under the rugs in certain families where it's like, okay, these kids are being messed with and nobody's talking about it. Wow. Kids are just put it in a, it's putting it in our face now. And kids are getting it like, all right, no, it's not okay. Wow. It's not okay for you to like little, little kids, like young women, like underage women. Mm. And so I, I think that was a, that's a that's an interesting point that I thought about because I watched several videos of kids like twelve and under rapping Kendrick Lamar's lyrics like not like us lyric by lyric and just like dancing to it and then they love that part A minor. <laughs> so, you messed my head up with that one, but no, it's that's real. It's like it's like you know wow. when kids are seeing like understanding that that child abuse yeah you know it's 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 one thing for your parents to say okay to try to under to try to teach kids what's wrong and what's right right and, and what and how they shouldn't be violated or right. anything of that nature but right when it when when kendrick puts it in a song that's that's palatable that you can mm. that you can dance to you can dance to this song and then also be made aware of someone who may be doing something wrong to mm-hmm. you and so i thought that's a i, I think that's something that's that's a powerful moment in yeah. a sense because usually, I mean, we, we, it's so many songs and, and, and kids are very particular about the songs that they like, they right? Are. They don't really like, kids don't really like every song, yep. right? It's, mm. it's, they have to, you know, they don't really, they don't really come together to like the, the same songs a lot, yeah. right? But it's for some reason, a lot of kids love this song, Not Like Us, but I say it's a message. It's a message to these kids. Like, look, mm. it's not okay. Mm. It's not okay for for grown people to look at you in a certain type of way. It's not okay for a grown yeah. person to touch you in a type of way. Wow. And, and and Kendrick did it, 
And so, you know, th- you know, <laughs> for the kids to know these lyrics and to know that uh, what they call stranger danger is mm. not it's not a good thing. I, I thought I think that's the that's a that's a point that no one is really touching on. But I don't know, just me seeing that all these kids are like gravitating towards not like us and dancing around to it. Yeah. And like I said, they're singing that song, a minor. Like they love, Yo, they love that part. Yes. But it shows you that look, it, it's it's telling that next generation that this isn't right. You shouldn't, you know. It 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 gives them it plants seeds in their head as well. So I, I thought that was a powerful moment as well. Not like us is the gift that keeps on giving because yeah. I think this record, this moment, every single time that we'll revisit this, man, we will always find something new. Like yeah. how you just broke that down. Can you just speak to Kendrick's level of ingenuity and being a genius? Because again, with the the timing of this pop out on Juneteenth, the timing of dropping all the diss tracks, everything has been so calculated. Can you just speak to Kendrick being such a genius? Well, no, he's he's uh he's crafty in a way that's like he moves like I don't know, he he kind of reminds me of like a like a prolific boxer. Mm. <laughs> like he's someone who's like studies his opponent mm. and he he like knows his not his opponent got a gonna, counter. Yeah, he got a counter. Yeah. He knows the mistakes that his opponent is going to make. Mm. It's like a boxer or a chess player. Mm. Well, he's thinking like three steps or four steps ahead of you wow. while you're making that initial move. He's like he already has that you know, he's thinking like 10 steps ahead. Mm. And that's what happened with this entire battle was that he had already he had a whole plan for this, <laughs> you know, and I think it can go for, like he said, I think it can go further. Mm. And, and, and I don't, like I said, I don't think Drake realized the magnitude of this. Mm. And, and I, and like I said, I, I told you weeks when it, when it first happened, I said, yeah. I think Drake should just stop. <laughs> don't say anything else. I, I, and I told you this. Yeah. I said, yeah. Drake should just stop because it's just going to go further. Mm. Now in my mind, I didn't think that Kendrick was going to do, Go to the farm and do the rap battle Super that was, Bowl. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't Nobody would ever thought he'd I didn't that think far. that, you know. On Juneteenth. On Juneteenth. <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna do the rap battle Super Bowl on Juneteenth <laughs> to destroy Drake again on a, in front of a global audience streamed on Amazon. Like wow. I didn't think that. Wow. But I'm sure Kendrick was probably thinking, Laughing. okay, like this is this is, you know, when he said I promise you, I can go further. Mm. This is what he was talking about. And I think he, he can he, he can go even further than what than that. That's scary. That's scary. Like today, they're they're filming the "Not Like Us" video they in Compton. Are. Yeah, it's getting worse. Bro. <laughs> so it's, yeah, so yeah, it's, they're, it's, it's, they're it's filming the worse. they're filming the "Not He's Like" not video. Up, <laughs> yeah. The fact that he let out what he wanted. I know that's yeah. That shows you what type of topic. So. <laughs> like, I'm sure people think like, "He gonna take it down." Oh yeah. Yeah. So so speaking of that, I, I'm I'm glad you brought that up. So yeah. Yes. So before I, I wrap that up and I go into that, of course. So you good. You take so, your time. So yeah. With with uh. Yeah, they, so they're doing not like us in the, the video <laughs> in Compton today. Wow! As we speak, um, and so that's one thing. And then you don't know if Kendrick is going to do these pop out shows in other cities. Mm, like he can do a pop out in Atlanta. That. He can do a pop out in New York. Turn he can do a, a pop out tour. in Chicago. The pop out tour. Pop out in Texas. Like he can do it. He can do this. He can oh, duplicate Jesus this Christ, in every city in America. Now it's like. He could just further take this to a whole another level where it's just like Drake can't even come outside. In Toronto. So he might even have it in Toronto. He might, he, Go ahead and sell it out. He might have a pop out in Toronto <laughs> where he might sell it out. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying I, I don't I like I don't think Drake understood the magnitude of wow. wh- how far this could go. Mm. And and when Kendrick Kendrick Lamar said, okay, you talk about push a T. You know, you better off spending the block on him. You talk about going out. like it would have been. Not lying. It would have been easier to go back out there, push a T, than, than, than to to what Kendrick is doing to him right now. Because, I, like I said, no rapper in the history of hip hop has been decimated on this level in mm. terms of a rap battle. Mm. Like we just haven't seen that. No lies detected, man. And seeing this man with the pop out, bringing awareness to Juneteenth, because we have people all across the world who are non-black looking up what is Juneteenth and even black children, because these are things that in school, I remember it was like rarely talked about. And for us growing up Juneteenth, it was viewed as like a Texas thing, you know, in Texas, this is what they celebrate, da, 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 not a federal holiday. Now, Mm -hmm. post George Floyd, federal holiday. AR, as a journalist, well-researched as well, how should we properly learn about uh, Juneteenth and what exactly is Juneteenth for people who just know like a little bit about it? 
Yeah, so Juneteenth uh, goes back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, the Emancipation uh, Proclamation uh, freed the slaves, and that was, you know, that was supposed to be the thing that, that it was, well, actually, it was the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. the, Ma the Emancipation Proclamation was the thing that, that led to the 13th Amendment, which, mm -hmm. which freed uh, the enslaved uh, uh, black people in America. Mm -hmm. After after that, like, but f for two years after that, uh, several several states continued slavery. Mm -hmm. Texas was one of those states that mm -hmm. continued slavery two years after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, was general. I right, so two years two years after after uh, black black Americans were were free mm -hmm. freed in America freed in the nation. Uh, Texas. They continued slavery, mm. and so the Union soldiers actually had to go into Texas. It was two thousand soldiers mm. with General Gordon Granger, mm. and he basically announced that all slaves were, was was free. Mm -hmm. This occurred on June nineteenth, mm. and so following that, there's been this. There was a, a they, you know, the individuals they call it they call it a Juneteenth, mm -hmm. in, 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 in recognition of. Mm -hmm that day. Mm -hmm. And so for years, uh, it was, it was a Southern thing, mostly yeah. Texas, yeah. uh, Louisiana, yeah. uh, Tennessee, some Georgia and mm -hmm. Alabama, uh, Mississippi, mm -hmm. uh, Juneteenth was celebrated mostly in the South. Mm -hmm. And it was something of, it, it was a, it was a thing where it, it, it talked about the traditions yeah. of, of black culture, mm -hmm. but also it was, a, it was a time to educate mm -hmm. because it was a time to let, to let the to let people know today about what occurred then, right. and so not just a celebration of all right, you know, we were, we were free, but also reminding us of where we come from. Mm. And so I think Juneteenth is important. In, in 2021, President Joe Biden yeah. uh, named Juneteenth a federal holiday, mm -hmm. and so uh, that kind of heightened it a little bit more, yeah. where it, it, it's now recognized globally. And you have different people, it's, you know, it's people from a from from a global standpoint. I mm -hmm. saw that are, that are doing Juneteenth dedications right. <laughs> online, and so uh, of course you have in different cities they have parades, they mm -hmm. have festivals, mm -hmm. uh, all to, to to commemorate this moment. Mm -hmm. And so Juneteenth is is definitely important, and and like I say, it's it was definitely intentional for Kendrick Lamar to to throw this concert mm -hmm. on Juneteenth. Knowing where we come from on Juneteenth, I felt like those words, it was powerful because yeah. I saw that personified on that stage yeah. where we see people from different hoods, where we see Dr. Dre, but then we see Kendrick, we see Ab yeah. Soul, we see Schoolboy Q, yeah. we see old with the new. Seeing L.A. in that moment, what do you think makes Kendrick so proud of being from L.A.? Because, man, seeing that, you could see that he was proud of being from L.A., being from Compton. Well, yeah, I mean, he is, I, I, like I said, I think it was, it's two things. I think he always, always had West Coast pride. He's always had L.A. pride. Mm -hmm. But it was also a nudge at Drake because, like I said before, Drake can't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Drake can't Drake can't put together uh, a show of that magnitude. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't even put together any, you know, anything of that magnitude in Toronto mm -hmm. and say that this is a part, this is who he represents. And so for Kendrick, I think it was like, all right, you, you don't think that I, you think that you're bigger in, in, in LA than me. Mm. Uh, and of course, like maybe, maybe Drake is bigger in Calabasas. Mm. <laughs> you know, maybe he's, maybe he's bigger in those places, but he's not bigger where it matters to the culture. Mm. And so I think that was, that was the thing that Kendrick was pointing out yeah. is that having, you know, individuals from, uh, from, from the young artists who were coming up to so YG, to Tyler, the creator, Bino was on there. Bino, yeah. Roddy Bino Rich. Yeah, Roddy Rich, uh, yeah. You know, to having all these artists come out and support just shows yeah. you, look, this is this is who I have. This is this is my this this has got mm. my back. I got the whole coast on my back. Mm. Now, if you want to battle me, this you're gonna have to battle everybody. Wow. You're gonna have to battle the entire state. Wow. Now you in a now you in a compromising position, right? Um mm. uh, you know, it's, I, so it's, it, it reminds me of this uh you know, this scene in this movie called The Bronx Tale. And uh, there's a scene in a movie where, uh, you know, they, they had a so the mobster he had a he had a restaurant or whatever, mm -hmm. and so these trucker guys they come up and they're like they're very rude and they're like yo just being all obnoxious, 
And so the mob bo boss, he comes in, he's like, look, you know, I want to ask you to leave. You know, we're going to ask you to leave, but we're going to do it as a, you know, I'm, as a gentleman, I'm asking you to leave. Yeah. So the, 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 the trucker guys, they get, they get more belligerent. Mm -hmm. They start to like, you know, you know, they're cursing, they're throwing stuff. And then so the mob boss, he walks quietly to the door mm -hmm. and he locks the door mm -hmm. and he says, all right, now you can't leave. <laughs> and you get all these mob guys just beating these bikers. Wow. <laughs> so it's just like, to me, it reminded me of that moment because it's just like, there was an out for Drake. He mm. there was an out. Like he he didn't. J have, Cole he used his. Yeah, J Cole used his out. <laughs> <laughs> he got out of yeah. it, and there was an out for Drake. Mm. And, but he didn't use it. He 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 continued to like poke the bear, and we saw what happened. And it's continuing to happen as we speak. Mm. Ayar, I don't think most people truly understand how political L.A. gang culture yeah. is, and I'll just say L.A. culture. And knowing that Kendrick, a Nick, a YG, we saw a blast, Bino, that those men and those individuals rose above those situations. If you can for us, please break down how, I don't want to say treacherous, but how political and challenging Kendrick's environment was to, to even overcome that. Definitely. I mean, you think about L.A. culture, L.A. gang culture, it's similar to Chicago gang culture. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you can meet a you can meet a young gang banger right now, who can say my grandfather was a gang banger. That's crazy. My wow. grand like, like my wow. grand like my my uncle was a gang banger, mm. and that's not typical in a lot of places. Nope. I mean, we, we talk about Atlanta and where there are gangs here, mm -hmm. but it's really just like young 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 dudes who are just running around in the streets. By the time they get if they if they make it to their twenties and they're still out, they usually do something else. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't really have 30-year-old gangbangers in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. like you just don't see it, right? Mm -hmm. But in L.A., you can see a 50-year-old gangbanger. You can meet a 60-year-old person who, who, was in the, who was in the set mm -hmm. 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a cultural thing. And so when it's a cultural thing, it's, that means generational. Mm -hmm. That means there's a generational issue that's happening within these communities mm -hmm. that's uh, typically been you know, at war for, for decades. Mm. And so, like I said, those environments could be very touchy. And, and mm. to have everybody to come on stage in unity in that moment just shows you the magnitude and the power of that moment. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I wish it could be duplicated in Chicago mm. because Chicago has a has a gang issue yeah. that's similar to L.A. where where there's generations of gang bangers mm. who represent uh, at the Peace, the Peace Stone Nation and, and mm -hmm. uh, folks and, yep. and the Black Gangster Disciples. Yep. Uh, and so that's happening in Chicago. And, and, and we, we would hope that Chicago could do something similar mm -hmm. in that sense, where it's like all the gangs come together and unify uh, for one cause mm -hmm. and just put down the guns and, and just mm -hmm. like stop the madness. And yeah. I think, like I said, that was the biggest message mm -hmm. of the pop out was yeah. that Kendrick is unifying everybody uh, in LA. And like I said, for someone who's not the average person who doesn't really pay attention to the LA gang politics mm -hmm. of, of what's happening in that city, mm -hmm. they might not understand it. Mm -hmm. But um, from a larger standpoint, if, you know, it's like if two warring countries mm -hmm. are on the same stage, mm -hmm. you know, it's like if you put, you know, Ukraine and Russia mm -hmm. in, on the same stage right now, it's, it's kind of almost impossible. You don't think it could ever happen. And, and Kendrick was able to do that. And so I think it's um, it's something that they can build off of yeah. in the community. And like I said, I hope it's duplicated in other cities. Yeah. On that point, how can we proper or properly utilize hip hop to unify the black community? Because so often you hear it in the social lexicon and people talking about, hey, hip hop is the problem. But that night at the pop out, it was the solution. So how can we, to your point, duplicate that all throughout where hip hop it's a solution instead of a problem. No, I think it, I, I mean, we can, we can follow that example. Mm. Like I, like I said, I think the pop out can happen in different cities. Atlanta could do a pop out. Mm. Atlanta can do a pop out where it's like, you know, if Andre comes back around, <laughs> you know, he, can, he has the power to, yeah, yeah Andre, you know, if Andre and, and big yeah. could, could do it just yeah. one time for the city. Yeah. Outcast, you know, Goody Mob, mm. uh, T.I., Killer Mike, Two Chains, Luda, mm. uh, you know, Future, yeah. 
I mean, it's so like gun like so many Atlanta artists, mm. you could do something similar to what happened in, in LA in mm. Atlanta. Like that could be that could be duplicated in this city. Mm. Uh but in terms of just unity, I, I would just hope that it, you know, that it would inspire, you know, people who are in the streets mm -hmm. to have that same mentality of look, man, we can make more money together than by mm. beefing. Mm. And so instead of fighting for the little resources that we're fighting over, let's put our let's pull our resources together to, to build something bigger. Yeah. For sure. I love that. For Kendrick, what do you think? is next man because from seeing this whole pop out happen and seeing how beautiful it was what else do you think kendrick has up his sleeve right now man kendrick 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 got the world in his palms right <laughs> <laughs> and like i said like all every it's almost like a, it is a it was a domino effect mm. the song like that was a subtle diss and and, and, and and you knew that he was aiming at at in a sense he was aiming at that he was aiming specifically at drake yeah J. Cole caught a stray, mm -hmm. but he was really aiming at Drake. Now, but it wasn't a song. Like I say, Drake could have just, he could have just probably just used it as a uh, another another time to, to to do a subtle diss. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to actually try to come out with a song. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't think, I don't know if we get all of this if Drake didn't like retaliate or, or, or try to, you know, initiate this battle. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we get these songs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we get these this this concert mm -hmm. if this if that this doesn't happen from mm -hmm. Drake. Now it just kind of elevates and it takes Kendrick to an entirely different level. Mm -hmm. Like it, it elevated him to a point where it's like you got almost gotta think of him as one of, as possibly the, the greatest rapper of all time. Ooh, like you, true. Like you have to he has to be in that discussion now. Man. Uh because there's not too many artists who can actually do something that he did. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just from a disc stand, from a disc record standpoint, and even mm -hmm. like from that concert standpoint. Yeah. Uh, so I think he's gonna. Of course, the video is coming. Not like us is coming. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm, I'm sure he has an album. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's gonna come out with a tour. Like I like it's I said, it's the best time. It's the best time. Like yeah. I said, he could he could he he might do the pop out in different cities and just start you know like come to Atlanta and like just do the same type of format. You know, go to Miami, do the same format. Mm. Uh, go to New York, do the same format mm. of just bringing out you know artists from different from from that specific that specific city yeah. to kind of like you know just to pop out. Mm. Um, so he has that, and yeah, I think I think he I think he has an album coming. I I just think this is his year. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this this battle has pretty much rejuvenated him to mm. a point where. It's almost like he can't lose right now. Mm. I think Kendrick, not I think I know, because Dr. Dre, when he was on Kevin Hart's talk show series that was on Peacock, he said this line, the clip is like recirculating right now, where Kendrick is that forever artist. Like he can disappear for five years and he yeah. comes back and then he's back relevant again. Yeah. And looking back at that clip, he was kind of talking about Drake, where he said where other artists have to always stay in your face. They're always on new songs. They're always dropping. I said, dang, the whole time he was already talking about Drake. What advice as a journalist do you have for artists who are studying Kendrick and Drake who may feel like my managers tell me to always post this TikTok dance yeah. and to stay relevant, opposed to me being a, a, a real true artist like a Kendrick where I'm actually taking time to soak up life experiences and gain and not trying to always be in the algorithm. Because as we saw, the, the actual anti-social one is now being viewed as the most social. He's the most loved, yeah. opposed to the person that's always trying to be loved. Well, it's a different it's a different era right now for new artists. I think, so the, what, what Kendrick is doing is something that most artists did in the 80s and the 90s. Like, that's what Prince would do mm. and Michael Jackson would do. Like, Michael Jackson would, would drop off the wall take two years and then drop mm -hmm. Thriller and then take two more years and then mm -hmm. drop Bad. Like, mm -hmm. and Prince would kind of do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, he would drop an album and then kind of like wait wait a year or two mm -hmm. and then drop another album. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but now because we, in a, we live in a time where content is just like, it's just so much content everywhere yeah. in terms of music, video, everything is just like in your face. It's just so accessible right now is that it's kind of hard for new artists to do what a Kendrick does mm. um, and still stay relevant. Mm. 
if you if you go to Kendrick route, I think what you put out, when you put out, has to be very significant mm. to the point where it's like it shifts culture. Mm. Now, if you can shift culture, and, and this is where anything you do, like if you can shift culture in a way that may, forces people to pay attention, forces people to think think about something, or if people just like it, yeah. then then you can do that. Like you yeah. can you can you can take your time with it, but. Um, you know, we just, it's, it's kind of a tricky space because it's like, if you go on too long, people do forget about you. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, like you're going to have to like create moments that are so significant mm-hmm. that even if you're going for a year or two, when you come back, they still remember. Mm-hmm. So I think that's like the biggest lesson of what, of what Kendrick was doing. Hey, that's a good game right there. We had two different real life experiences during that pop out. You were in person experiencing it and yeah. I was at the crib, Amazon Prime watching it. And yeah. watching it on Prime, that production value was A1. Not like us, when the wop, wop, wop part yeah. happened, they're changing camera angles, it's so detailed, the coloring, the lighting, everything is just beautiful. In person, what was that whole production value like for you seeing it all in person? Well, initially just coming out, I was like, it was, uh, it was interesting to see the big screen, like on. Mm. So you saw this long stage. Yep. The, the stage almost looked like a runway, yeah. <laughs> kind of like like you know the, the runway that models yep. <laughs> it was like a runway show, right? <laughs> you had this massive screen over the stage, mm. and so that made it just like you could just wherever wherever you were sit wherever you were sitting, you could see the show. Yep. Because the screen That's was smart. just so massive, like yep. it was just a big screen. Um, and just you know just that, and I think the. The ambiance, the smoke, it was just like a lot. And then by the time Kendrick came, came on, um, you hear that, you hear that, uh, that, 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 uh, you know, you're the latest, my greatest. You hear that sample. And it's like Kendrick just, just comes up from the stage <laughs> and he's sit, he's on one knee. <laughs> and then it's like, it's like the, the lights are red and it's mm. like smoke on the stage. Mm. And it's like, he's like kneeling and he's just like rapping. So euphoria, that that mm. that introduction part, and it's mm. like, you know, I see your superpowers being neutralized, mm. and it's like he just kind of just you know wrapping in this 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 you know this small the voice is like mm. he's talking to us, mm. almost like he's just giving us a like a like a story, like he's mm. telling us a story, how it's all gonna play out, and then the beat drops on euphoria, mm. and then you get explosions, <laughs> boom! <laughs> so it's like massive explosions, mm. massive fireworks. Uh, pyrotechs. It's just like so much happening in this moment where it's just like, man, this is like, this is, this is, this is something that you don't even expect because it's like you in this room with all these people singing every single line wow. of a diss song. And the diss song is like seven minutes. Mm. Kendrick doesn't take a break. He just goes straight through. Mm. He's just like, he doesn't, and also he doesn't have a tracking. So mm. he's just rapping. Like this is just, this, this is his voice. <laughs> like there's no, there's no back, there's no backtrack. That's helping him. Mm. He's rapping on in the mic, and this is what you're hearing. <laughs> so it's like, you know, from a from a just from a professional standpoint, knowing he has that voice control. Mm. Um, for the for the entire show, was, I think the, the the entire show was probably like like an hour and a half or two hours. I didn't see him take a drink of water. Mm. So he just performed straight through all those songs. It's like straight through, and. Just the, I mean, just the, the way that the, 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 you know, the power techniques were set up for every, you know, the, the word, any, anytime there was a, a striking word, you would hear those, poof, like you would hear that, that explosion. Yeah. And I just thought that was just like, you know, something that was, you know, that you didn't, that you wouldn't expect. It was out of this world yeah. in terms of just putting on a, a, a theatrical show yeah. uh, from beginning to end. It was like, he's taking you down this this path of, look, you know, I'm going to show you that I don't like this dude. <laughs> and we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And we're just going, we're going to do it in the, in the biggest way possible. Yeah. And like I say, it felt like a Super Bowl. Mm. I got an opportunity to cover the Super Bowl last year. Well, this year with Usher, Usher at the Super Bowl. And that was a big moment. Mm. This felt like a Super Bowl halftime show. Like it, it had that type of appeal of, of, of this wasn't just a concert, mm. this was something bigger. Mm. Like this was something that was more than just a, a show. Yeah. Uh, 
or just a regular concert. This was something that was just 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 huge. Mm-hmm. And so I just think from the from the from the you know the ambiance of the of the of the lighting of the mm-hmm. stage, uh, the pyrotechnics, uh, just him as a performer, as yeah. an artist who can who can who can uh, maintain uh, control of of an entire performance mm. without taking a break, without taking a sip of water, mm. <laughs> just going straight through. Yeah, I mean it's it's like I said, it's something it, for me. I've 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 witnessed a lot of concerts, uh, and and it's top three. Wow, of all probably of all time. I, I'm going to always say Outkast, mm-hmm. uh, the Atlas concert when they did it at Centennial Park. Mm. For me, that was like that was like our pop out moment because they had all the Atlanta artists there. That was it was like 2014 when they they when Outkast came came back uh, together. Um, but yeah, man, it was just a, it was an amazing production from beginning to end. Ar man, something that I find so ironic and crazy is that people were always talking about boom bat lyrical miracle rap is over with. It's about melodic. We ain't trying to listen yeah. to all that stuff. Most Kendrick haters, they will say, oh, I'm not trying to listen. I'm not trying to be thinking that much, all that (laughs) stuff. However, it's funny because now Kendrick is at the top. He is at his apex right now, and he is lyrical miracle. He is, I guess you could say, boom, bap. But then at the same time, Kendrick, he creates cultural moments. And I felt like, damn, it personified that, where you still had radio records, but he's still giving you bars. It's still amazing. You still hear it on the NBA Finals DNA. They still try to play that, right? So now seeing that Kendrick is on top right now, do you think Boom Bat Rap is still alive? Uh, Lyrical rap, in a sense. I think if if you can... um... I think if you could position it in a way that's palatable, right? Because a mm-hmm. lot of the issue with a lot of, like I say, lyrical rap, mm-hmm. is that uh, the beats aren't really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like if you if you like rapping lyrical miracle, Nas used to go through that. Yeah, for a long yeah. time, Nas <laughs> went through that. But he, you know, him him and Hit Boys yeah. created some, yeah. some some magic work, man. Yeah. Like you gotta, you gotta mm-hmm. yeah, like they 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 put together some dope projects. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of the miracle lyrical miracle raps, for whatever reason, the beats just didn't really people didn't gravitate towards that production. Uh, Kendrick has always had great production. Yeah. Like he's always, he knows how to like use music. And um, it just talk about not, not like us, just like that beat uh, by Mustard. Mm. I mean, that's something that's very, uh, it's, it's very Southern to me. Yeah. Like you got the trumpets, mm. you know, it's, and it, it's, it's like a, it's like a marching band. It's like a, like it's, you, it's like a well, marching band. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Like it's like a marching mm. band coming in. Like, mm. Is is you know, I know Joe Budden said you can't you know you can't you know you better be glad it's not HBCU season. <clears throat> oh, dang, he's right. That would have been. But <clears throat> but it sound but it wow. sounds like the song that you would hear. That's right. At an HBCU at, at a halftime show. Mm. Like I said, the trumpets. You know, mm-hmm. like it's just so. It's I mean, DJ must have put it together. Mm. Like it's not a it's not a, a typical beat. Like it's like it's it's one of those songs that that instantly makes you move mm. and it, it regardless of your age like if you're yeah. a kid or somebody <laughs> old like it makes you move it makes you want to get up and dance yeah. and i think that's like the genius of it mm. is that it's not only like you going after someone you don't like you have an opponent in a rap battle mm. but you've also done it in a way that made it palatable mm. for pretty much anybody who listens or who loves music because wow. it's a song that you want to dance to Wow. <laughs> like you want to move to it whenever you hear it it's like it's just that infectious mm-hmm. right and so i just think that he's been and what's interesting that you know dj mustard said a few days ago that he didn't work on the song with kendrick i heard about that i saw that clip too yeah so so kendrick <laughs> you know so a lot of times what producers do like they they send out beats mm-hmm. and i know zay i interviewed zay, zay Tovin years ago yeah and he told me that uh the bando beat for migos he didn't even know that they that that they had rapped over the beat. Wow. He said he used to just give out his beats to people, and then whoever rapped on it, you know, they they figured out yeah. in terms of the, the the points and things of that mm-hmm. nature. And uh, as they told me, you know, during my interview with him, he told me that, you know, someone called him was like, "Look, man, you got these boys, Migos, they rapping crazy over your beat." <laughs> he ain't even he hadn't even heard Bando, wow. and you know he listened to it, and so that's that was like Migos' first kind of street hit, uh, mm-hmm. Bando, mm-hmm. trapped out the Bando. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so I guess something similar happened with Mustard, where it's like Kendrick had a bunch of beats 
and he just he rapped over the mustard beat. They they didn't work in the studio together, but he pulled that beat and just you know created possibly one of the greatest hip hop songs of all time. Jeez. Yes, I completely agree, man. Because not like us is different, man. Yeah. Dr. Dre, hearing him whisper, I see dead people. <laughs> it was electric because everybody knew what was coming at home. Friends and family, everybody knew what was next. How electric was the forum once that beat dropped to Not Like Us? Yeah, so in the forum, so Dr. Dre, he does uh, Steel Dre. He comes out Steel Dre, then he does California Love. Mm -hmm. um, initially, everybody thought Snoop was gonna going to pop yeah, out, but I, but yeah, Snoop was Snoop was was traveling, so yeah. he didn't uh, mm -hmm. he he didn't show up. But uh, so Dr. Dre is actually walking out off the stage, mm -hmm. right? And Kendrick said, "Yo, yo, Dre, hold up, <laughs> we we got one more thing to do." And Dre like, all right, he turns back around. He's like, "Oh yeah, you're right." And Drake kneels down and said, oh, it's, I see dead people. <laughs> so the crowd is goes. I mean, I, like, I don't think I've ever been. It, this was like, this was like a, if you had a football game and a team, a, a, a team scores, your team scores a touchdown and just like the entire mm. crowd erupts mm. after Dre says, I see dead people. Mm. I mean, people are jumping. Kendrick is like, must have on the beat. <laughs> I'm talking about. People dancing, yeah. they crip walking in the in, in the stadium. <laughs> I mean, in the, in the, in the arena. <clears throat> Kendra gets to the Kendra gets to mm -hmm. the part. A minor. Yep. <laughs> he just paused and he mm. kind of does this Drake the, the dance yeah, that Drake, the Drake is dance. doing yeah. <laughs> on, on, on Hotline Bling. He's just like he's mimicking Drake on, on Hotline Bling. And so it cuts off. Mm. And he's like, yo, let's run it back. <laughs> da, 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 da. And so the, the horns come back in. Mm. And this time he he brings out two young women who are dancing. Yeah. Like they 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 like they like they crib walking, they're doing mm -hmm. these LA dancing, yeah. like, you know, real hard. And they got like uh you know, he got the he got the power technics going. He's like, wop, 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 wop. Mm. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it's like top power technics going off when he's saying wop and then uh, you know, so that so then he you know he goes through that again, and then he does it a few more times, and then he he invites all these people on stage. Yeah. Like he invites all the Bloods on stage, yeah. all the Crips on stage. Yeah. Russell Westbrook, Demar Derozan. <laughs> I mean, hey, Brian, he wanted to be on stage too. I know too. LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> Savannah, <laughs> LeBron. I know. Savannah pulled him back. <laughs> so, I, so LeBron. That, all right. So that so the LeBron the LeBron piece is another interesting piece. It is. It is indeed. Because LeBron and Drake are they've been close mm -hmm. for a long time. Like like LeBron and Drake been close for at and least LeBron, he plays for the Lakers, so you got he, the LA connection he, now. Yeah, but but even before that, you gotta understand, like I remember so I I, I interviewed LeBron for he did a, he did a movie years ago about his it was a it was a documentary about his high school. Yeah. His high school career. And um and Drake and Drake did the the, the lead single. Was that uh more than a game? Yeah, forever. Yeah, I remember forever. that. So You're right. So Drake did the league singer. So yeah. ever since then, LeBron and Drake have been just like cool. Like mm -hmm. they, you know, you always see Drake and LeBron. Yeah. They they just cool like that. Yeah. Or you thought they were cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, and even even in uh, uh maybe like a couple of months ago, Drake was on LeBron's podcast, uh, The Shop. Yep. And he talked. They talked about the beef uh, mm -hmm. with Pusha T. Mm -hmm. And LeBron said that he, you know, that they had a conversation about it on the phone. What I tell you to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, what I tell you to do. And so, you know, that was an interesting moment where it's just like, you know, Drake and, and you, you kind of see their bond mm -hmm. that Drake and LeBron have a, have a, have a significant bond, you would think. Yeah. And, uh, and so you see LeBron there and LeBron is just like rapping every word to not <laughs> like us. Savannah's right there. You know, they vibing. Oh, and Lauren, Lauren London was right next to... Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was Lauren wow. London. Lauren London was right next to Savannah and LeBron. Wow. So they were all together just vibing to not wow. like us. Uh, and so, yeah, that was a crazy moment to see LeBron, like, vibing to not like us. And now, I don't really, I don't really, like, follow, like, in terms of, like, what's happening on social media. Mm -hmm. But there was something, there was a buzz saying that Drake unfollowed LeBron after that moment on social media. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but mm. there was a lot of people saying on on, on social media that Drake unfollowed uh, LeBron after that moment <laughs> of seeing LeBron rapping to Not Like Us. So, like I say, it was a lot of layers to this whole thing where it's just like, you know, people that I guess 
you know, one thing about Drake, he, he leans into sports mm. in terms of he's always around athletes. You know, he's at game. He, you know, he gambles on a lot of games. Mm -hmm. And I think Kendrick, you don't, you rarely see Kendrick with, with other athletes. I think the only athlete I really saw him with was Kobe. Like yeah, he would, he would, yeah. he would be with Kobe, mm -hmm. but you don't really see Kendrick just like fraternizing with a lot of athletes. You mm -hmm. just don't see that. Um, and, but this moment, it was like almost another thing where it's like he switched it on Drake, where it's like Drake is the guy who wants to hang around all these athletes. Mm. Now, Kendrick has all these athletes on stage dancing to this song that's basically <laughs> destroying mm. his character. Mm. Uh, so, like I say, there's so many levels to this thing from, you know, just from the from the entire show to who was at the show, mm. who was on stage. Mm. Uh, it's just so many levels to this entire thing that's like, you know, I think it's going to take – this is going to be something that people are going to study years from later. Like, it's, it's going to be something that's going to be studied in colleges at some point. Man, people always talk about World War III happening, but yeah. I think that that was our, our type of version <laughs> of World War III because everybody had to pick a side. And seeing Bron, I was just like you, right, where I'm a Drake fan as well, but yeah. I felt like Bron too. Like, in this moment, I resonate more with Kendrick as a black man in America, his messaging, everything, because Drake, he drew that line in the sand. And on that point too, social media, you got social media influencers. So I saw uh, my man, I forgot his name, but RDC World, I think. Uh, Mark Phillips. Mark Phillips. Yeah. He was posted uh, with Kendrick yeah. behind stage, right? Drewski commented at the <laughs> bottom, I was crying. Pick a side and stay <laughs> yeah. on it, right? Oh, you know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, we got comedians. Yeah. Pick his sides in this war. Ben the Don, same thing. He's with Drake. Man, how detrimental do you think it is for people like Drewski who would side with Drake when Kendrick right now is clearly taking a mantle? Well, I, you know, what's interesting is that it's music. And I don't I don't I don't really think you have to pick a side. Like mm. I, I don't think you really I think yeah. there's no rule unless you're like I think if you're in a crew now, you can't be in Drake's crew and then, <laughs> hey, and then you can't be like with, 40 hanging out with kids. Yeah, you can't week. be like 40 hey, or, or Chubbs on the stage <laughs> dancing a lot like us. Now it, that's <laughs> right. That's what you said. <laughs> that's that's off limits. But but uh, if you if you're just an average person who likes music, the average the average person like. I don't. I don't think you have to hate Drake's music. Mm -mm. You can like Drake and you can like Kendrick. Right. They're both creating music for people to enjoy on different yeah. levels. Now, I, I think when it when it gets, it gets it gets interesting. Like I say, when you when you see like, I guess, you know, the, the social media celebrities or whatever, uh, saying that you have to pick a side. I don't, I don't really think you have to. I don't think they, you know, have to pick a side. I, yeah. I think you can enjoy both artists yeah. the same way and be critical of both artists. Mm -hmm. Uh, the same way, yeah. Uh, but I, I, it's it's interesting. Mark Phillips actually responded. I hadn't gotten an opportunity to listen to his response, but mm -hmm. it, that'd be interesting. I don't think you have <laughs> to. I, I I I personally don't think you have to like choose between Drake or Kendrick in terms of music. You can still listen to Drake music if you want. You can still listen to Kendrick music if you want. But I think when people listen to Drake's music now, I think they're gonna always. I, like I said, mm. I think Kendrick planted so many seeds that it's like, damn, I'm I'm, I'm going to be thinking about this now mm. when I'm when I'm listening to this dude's music. Mm. You know, it's it's kind of tainted now. Yeah. Uh, in a in a sense, and yeah. so, um, yeah. So I, I I just think that you can't like I, I think you can I, I think you can listen to both music, mm -hmm. uh, both both artists, mm -hmm. uh, but I just don't I don't I don't I don't draw into the thing where you have to like pick a side yeah. you know unless you're actually in those crews yeah yeah i feel you man ar you killed this conversation it was another classic session at the start of this conversation hearing you talk about being on that flight and nip unfortunately he passed that day and got off straight to the streets being a great journalist you have a knack of just being at the right place at the right time, being tapped in with the right people, telling the right stories at the right time. Why is journalism so important right now, real journalism? Because you know, you have, everybody has a podcast, everybody has a blog, a website, but why is real journalism so important right now? You know what's interesting? Um, so DJ Head, who was one of the guys who mm -hmm. did the, uh, who had an opening set at the, uh, not at the pop out mm -hmm. tour, at the pop out show mm -hmm. in LA, he has a podcast and um, with Elliot Wilson. Yeah. And last week I was listening to it, just passively listening mm -hmm. to it. 
And DJ Head said, you know, I'm not a journalist. Mm. And he said, you know, people who are journalists, they study the craft. Mm. They actually put in the work, they put in the research, mm -hmm. they actually do the work, the homework mm -hmm. to be called a journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I had to big up DJ Head for saying that because mm. You know, he said, he said, you know, if you have a, if you just buy a podcast, mic, mm -hmm. a cameraman and lights, that doesn't make you a journalist. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad he said that, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he was, he was, he, he pointed at himself. He said, I'm not a journalist. Mm -hmm. He said, I haven't put in the work mm -hmm. to be a journalist. And mm -hmm. I, and I think more people should think that way. I think, uh, you know, like I say, because, because of uh, technology, you know, it's, which is good that people get an opportunity to tell their stories on different mm -hmm. platforms. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think, if you want to call yourself a journalist, you have to actually put in the work that journalists do, mm. which means you have to do the research. Mm. You have to understand the craft. Mm. You have to understand AP style. Mm. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> these are these are like the small <laughs> things that you really have to know about being a journalist. Like, yeah. you know, you really know, you need to know the AP style book. Mm. Like, uh, so it's just, you know, it's important for, for people to understand that there's a difference between uh, someone who just has a podcast mic or a platform versus someone who's actually putting in the work to actually tell these true stories uh, through and through. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as journalists, we don't put out any information without knowing that it's factual. Yeah. Uh, we have to make sure that we putting out mm -hmm. something that's uh, well researched, that's yeah. well thought out, mm -hmm. and that we're actually uh, taking our, doing our due diligence mm -hmm. and making sure that what we're saying is correct. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing that's missing at, at right now in this whole media space is mm -hmm. that you have so many people who have opportunities to be on platforms, mm -hmm. but they're not actually taking the time to do the research and understand what it actually takes, what it, what it means to be a journalist on this level. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the biggest thing when you talk about, uh, you know, the future of journalism is yeah. really understanding the craft, what it is, and then doing it on a day to day basis. It's not mm -hmm. just one time. It's just how it's basically a way of life. Mm -hmm. Come on now, all the young journalists, man, tap in with the great A.R. Shaw. How would you describe the current state of hip hop right now and also the culture? No, nah, hip hop is in a good place. I mean, it's, it's always evolving. Um, it's always going through a different ebbs and flows. And it, it just it's, it's a it's a it's a, uh, a tool to tell stories. Mm. And <clears throat> one thing I think that particularly the pop out did was. And I always said this, I, you know, hip hop is the first art form that really put regionalism of black America mm. in the forefront. Um, before then, you know, before before hip hop, you didn't really know that, you know, well, well, the nation didn't know <clears throat> that black people in Atlanta kind of had different styles mm -hmm. than black people in the Bay Area. And that mm. black people in the Bay Area were kind of different from black people in New York. Mm -hmm. And black people in New York were different from black people in Chicago and mm. Detroit. So. It's like each city has their own flavor. They have their own lingo, their own style. Yeah. And hip hop put that into the forefront where it was just like, this is what a, this is what it means to come from a region. Right. This is how we talk. This is yeah. how we dress. This is mm. the food that we eat. Mm. This is how we go about our day to day life. Mm. This is how we handle relationships. And so I think hip hop did a did an amazing job of, of just that regionalism of black America. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, with with the advancement of technology, you don't really have that same regionalism where now it's just like, you know, they, they, there came a time in hip hop where it was just like one sound, right? Mm -hmm. And for a long time, that was the Atlanta sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everybody mm -hmm. was trying to sound like Atlanta mm -hmm. because Atlanta's um, uh, hip hop scene was so dominant mm -hmm. that you had rappers from New York sounding like Atlanta, rapping mm -hmm. over Atlanta beats. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was just, it became Atlanta. Like the entire hip hop just became Atlanta. And like, me being from Atlanta, of course, I like it. You want to, you, you know, you like it. But at the same yeah. time, it's like, no, I really want to know what New Yorkers, I really want to know what a New York sound like right now. It doesn't really have to sound like, I don't know how New York became trap. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or drill. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how New York went from Nas to what a lot of New York rappers represent today. Mm -hmm. And so I just think that it's, I don't know, it just shows you that that how, because of because of social media, because of the advancement of technology, people can tap into other styles of music without actually being from a place. Mm. Whereas in the 90s, in the 80s, you actually had to be from a place because this is what you listen to and this mm. is what your parents listen to. And so this is how you kind of turn that, turn created music based off of that feeling. 
right? Mm -hmm. Because you because if you listen to a 1995 UGK album, mm -hmm. it don't sound like a 1995 Wu-Tang album. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. Yeah. Wow. See, like totally different worlds. Mm -hmm. But now you can't really tell the difference between Texas and New York in terms of hip hop mm. in a lot of spaces. So I think right now, uh, of course, I, I would love for regionalism to come back in hip hop. I would love for L.A. to sound like L.A. and for Atlanta to sound like Atlanta, for New Orleans to sound like New Orleans with the bounce. Yeah. I would love for that to, 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 to come back. Um, and hopefully this is something that's going to like, you know, fuel fuel that next generation of like, look, this is let's let's tap into our own and. And, it, and it, it's, it's scary too because maybe they don't even know what it <laughs> like. Mm -hmm. It's so it's so far removed now that you this next generation might not even know what it means to rap like their own self mm. instead of trying to imitate the sound that's hot. Wow. I think that's what everybody's doing now. It's like imitating what's hot and just chasing following. the algorithm. They chasing the algorithms. Yeah. yeah, man. Hey, all right. You body this one again in the comments. You already know they gonna tell you that. Yeah. In closing, <laughs> what do you think? we will define Kendrick's legacy to be? Let's say 20, 30 years from now, when Kendrick, when he's laid back and he's chilling and he's like yeah. LL Cool J, Rakim to us, what do you think Kendrick's legacy will be? Now he's gonna be in, I think Kendrick Lamar is gonna be in the discussion for the greatest hip hop artist of all time. Mm -hmm. Like he's gonna be in the discussion <clears throat> with Tupac. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be in a discussion with Jay-Z, mm -hmm. Nas, uh, Eminem, mm -hmm. Big, like he's gonna be in that discussion, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think he can. On, he's only gonna grow now. I think this is like almost like a. This is kind of like a rebirth, like mm -hmm. his second, almost like a second career, like of him being able to build off of a moment. Mm -hmm. Nas had a similar situation that happened to him because uh, a lot of people don't know. Like before Ether came out, Nas had been. He had been kind of like. In a in a in a real weird space in terms wow. of music because yeah he dropped Illmatic which is mm -hmm. a classic mm -hmm. it was written was a good one mm -hmm. uh, Nostradamus was cool mm -hmm. but it was just like all right you know it was it wasn't really you know on that same level mm -hmm. now well no, no it was I am then Nostradamus mm -hmm. so I am was I am I am and then Nostradamus and so that was kind of a weird type of space and then Ether comes mm -hmm. he has this battle with Jay Z. Mm -hmm. And then Nas' career takes off. It takes a whole, it goes to a whole nother level. Right. And uh, this might, this the same thing may happen to Kendrick, where it's just like <clears throat> you're gonna see this rebirth. Where now, like, like Kendrick was already a big star, but now he's his name is just resonated so big on this moment because it's just like that show and this whole rap battle has had. You know, you, you, I've seen coverage on NBC. I've yep. seen coverage on Good Morning America. I've seen ABC World News, ABC World this. News. Like I've seen like major <laughs> yeah. mainstream outlets covering this 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 rap battle, yeah. which is which is you know something that they rarely do. Like mm. you rarely see mainstream publications paying attention to a rap battle, mm. and uh, that's what's happened with this whole thing. Wow. Now Kendrick is going to be all right. Kendrick is going to be good. Kendrick is Kendrick is Kendrick. He's going to continue to represent for the culture. I'm sure he's going to drop a new album. He's going to go on tour. Uh, He's still gonna like take this moment for the summer. I think not like us is gonna play until uh, until Labor Day. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna this is gonna be the song of the summer. Mm -hmm. Now Drake, he needs to sit down for a bit. And this is no, this is real. This is real game. Like he needs to like he needs to go away for a minute. Like because right now, anything that he says is gonna be clouded. Mm -hmm. And unless he, you know, some people are saying that he may have something that that's coming. Uh, because he's, uh, I don't know, he's been doing these subliminals. He's been doing a lot of these subliminals on social media. And, you know, so that, so some people are speculating that he's going to have another diss or some type of something, some type of retaliation. And let's hope he doesn't retaliate. <laughs> let's hope he doesn't do anything, <laughs> anything close to retaliation besides a subtle, he can do subtle disses here and there. <clears throat> but he should never do another diss song aimed at Kendrick. Ever. Um, because I, Kendrick has a line, he says, you know, how many do I have? Like one, two, three, plus five, plus five. Like I like I think Kendrick has probably like <laughs> 10 more songs ready just in case Drake does anything. So Drake needs to step away for a minute. You know, if people are in his camp, they should advise him to just like get away for a minute. You know, don't do any songs, 
because even the songs that he's put out prior to this stuff happening, like the Sexy Red thing mm. where he rapped over the BBL Drizzy, <laughs> it's just like, all right, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, then he had this other song. It was like a song with an acoustic guitar. Yeah, I forgot the name. Delilah, of the song. Or something. Delilah. Yeah, yeah, Delilah. Yeah. It was. And so I'm just like, oh man, this guy is just like. He's spiraling. <clears throat> It's like he's making all the wrong decisions. <laughs> and I don't know who's in his camp, who's mm. like advising him, mm. but they should advise him to at least step away for six months, mm. uh, come back maybe at the end of the year or the top yep. of next year, yep. and just come out with some 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 good music. And, yep. and people will forget, you know, yep. because I think it's time. So much, so much will happen from, from now to, to January that, mm. you know, the news cycle stuff happens. And so yep. give people space to, to miss you mm-hmm. and then you come back but then you got to come back in a, in a way of, of being more informed yep. being more informed about who you are what you represent how you mm-hmm. represent yourself and then go from there because for a few years drake has been just doing crazy stuff it's just like you know he's just been very he's he's been someone who hasn't been checked and i think mm-hmm. this is the first time he's actually had to have been checked as somebody who who he didn't think was on his level, mm. <laughs> checked him in the worst possible way. Mm. And now he needs to really do some, a self-assessment about who he is and how he represents himself uh, moving forward. Now, he's always going to be a big artist. I think people, you know, because he's a pop artist, mm-hmm. I think he's always going to gravitate towards that crowd. Like, people are always, you know, they're going to always love those songs that mm-hmm. he's put out. But now, like I say, from a cultural standpoint, people are going to look at him differently. Mm-hmm. They're going to see him differently because of what Kendrick has put out there. And what, but not just put out there, but he's magnified because all the stuff that 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 Kendrick said outside of the door, I guess, because I don't I haven't seen the mm-hmm. door, but everything else that he said, Kendrick is magnified yes. that's that you can't prove like you can mm-hmm. prove that Drake was on stage kissing a 17 year old girl <laughs> like you can. He just lost a real big bet that he made on a sports game. So, yeah, he yeah, have yeah, a gambling yeah. Problem. he just lost a, get, uh, a <laughs> sports bet. So, you know, he has a gambling problem. And so it's like, you know. Everything that, that that Kendrick said is just just magnified mm. Drake's issues, mm. and so at this point he's just gonna need to do some self reflecting. I think you know take six months off, mm. get in the lab, really put out some you know just get, get in the lab for a minute, mm. and then put out some good work. He'll be all right. But as long as he continues to like try to like push back against this battle, it's just gonna get worse. And it, <laughs> and like I say, if you if Kendrick can do a Super Bowl of a rap battle <laughs> on Amazon Gosh. in front of the entire world. Like, I don't, I don't know how Drake could combat that if he, you know, if he tries to push further. Mm. So my thing is just go away for a minute and then come back, you know, next year and then you figure it out from there. He has to go pretty much in like exile in so many words, AR, hey, where he has to exile himself, get his stuff back together, regroup and come back. That is a tough fall, man. AR, I appreciate you so much, brother. This was a great conversation. Another classic one. On the way out, man, show them the book, Trap History. How can they yeah. purchase the book? Um, how can they follow you, contact you, all that good stuff? Yeah, definitely. I am the author of Trap History. Uh, it's the first book on the history of trap music and Atlanta culture. And uh, yeah, we talk about you know just the history of Atlanta hip hop and pretty much how trap music came about. Uh, from a musical standpoint and all from a social also from a social standpoint as mm-hmm. well and so you can check out the book on amazon.com right now order it uh, also there's an audio book you can check out the audio book and uh, you can follow me on instagram at a r s h a w 23 you can follow me on twitter or x whatever you want to call it at a r shaw a r s h a w uh, youtube a r shaw tv so yeah just tap in uh, definitely let me know uh, what your thoughts are on uh, just discussion that we're having. Mm-hmm. Let's let's further the discussion. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's let's continue to chat, man. It's always good to to be here and, and talk about these important moments in mm-hmm. the culture. <laughs> yes, sir. My guy, Ar Shaw. Y'all make sure to follow him, tap in with him, have a great discussion on Twitter. He'll probably tweet you back in the comments as well. Tap yeah. in, man. Again, blessed be your host, Caleb Smith. Shout out to Sid and Zay, and for y'all for always watching, tuning in, and showing love. Until next time, peace.